The 2011 Daytona 500 is perhaps one of the most pivotal and milestone marred races in the last 15 years. It was the first race on the new pavement at Daytona, the same surface that replaced the one that had been there since 1979. And the race also marked the first event with the new look car tomorrow. And the front row was held by Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jeff Gordon. On top of all that, various tributes carried on throughout the week, marking the 10 year anniversary of Dale Earnhardt's passing. With all these special incentives, a driver in only his second cup start would win in the Classic Whip Brothers 21. This is the story of how Trevor Bain did the unthinkable. Our story starts during the dual race on Thursday. Trevor Bain in Duel 2 started front row with Jeff Gordon. Gordon enjoyed working with Bain and decided to draft with him throughout speed weeks. He was building Bain's reputation in the garage. And Trevor, with his little experience, was already getting attention when the Wood Brothers had brought a car that went fourth overall on qualifying day. Bain would crash out though in the duel and start in the back for the race. It didn't stump the attention, however, as Fox would interview Bain before the green flag on Sunday. Good job, buddy. Hey, you're driving the famous 21 car. You've met David Pearson, who's won the Daytona 500 in that car. What's your game plan? With Kurt Busch replacing Dale Jr. on the front row due to a practice crash, we go green in the 53rd Daytona 500. Set to go green, the Camaro pace car will make the left turn to pit road, and Darrell, it's time to start another season of NASCAR, and NASCAR on Fox. Be nice here, be nice guys, hold on, hold on. Boogity, boogity, boogity! Gordon without his partner Trevor Bain plummets to the back of the field, and Kurt Busch leads lap one with partner Regan Smith. Kevin Harvick and Matt Kenseth though get to the outside and lead lap number two. After that, the lap three Dale Earnhardt tribute begins. For the race. seven championships or all of his victories but the advances in safety in NASCAR that followed that dark day in 2001. Oh Kyle Busch! Speed behind you wave to seven. Gets it down on the apron without further contact jostling further back but no other collision. Kyle Busch's lap 5 spin causes the first caution of the 2011 Daytona 500, and pit road floods with competitors. As the new widened pit lane improves safety for crews, the 18 crew realigns the front toe, and the field doubles up and retakes the green flag. The tandems persist again as Mark Martin and the 43 of H. Almendinger push Kenseth and Harvick. Suddenly, Jeff Gordon and Case Kane fly up to the leaders, as the rest of the field is on top of one another. Down the back stretch on lap 11, the 46 starts smoking and brings out the caution. Coming back to the line, however, Truex almost ends the race of various competitors. I'm going to run on the far outside up here. Here you go. Got two outside, two outside, two outside. Come on, no. Got to watch him caution light when the caution comes out. The field pits and prepares for another restart, this time with Brad Kozlowski and Bobby Labonte leading. The race restarts again on lap 16 as the field spaces out in the tandems once more. On the opening lap, they go four wide and sort it out, 
Eventually, Labonte and Brad get way ahead before Paul Menard and Tony Stewart catch them. In the back, Jeff Gordon has found Trevor Bain and are drafting just inside the top 30. As Paul Menard grabs a sturdy lead over Jay McMurray and Juan Pablo Montoya, the Ganassi cars make a swap before Carl Edwards and Greg Biffle come flying up the middle. Eventually, Caution 3 comes out. Gordon sustains nose damage as he comes down and the crew begins working on it. It came from the checkup from Harvick's engine failure and Robbie Gordon getting rear-ended. The field doubles up and restart number 4 comes on lap 27. Boyer and Kurt Busch charge side-by-side -side as the top third lane is led by Brian Kozlowski. Brian is the underdog run of Speed Weeks this year. They go three wide as Clint Boyer leads, getting pushed by Dale Earnhardt Jr. As they pass each other back and forth at the front, the big one strikes in the pack. We know better. Thank you, good drive a car, folks at home, 200 miles an hour. Closer together than most people park. Yeah, 200 miles an hour with somebody pushing. Trouble, turn oh, three. Big wreck. Brian Keselowski, David Rudeman, Michael Mike Waltrip, big. Matt Kenseth, big and wreck. half the field. I see about three of the Hendrick cars there that's Mark, involved. Mark Martin is there. I see him. There's a Biffle. Timmy Johnson's laying over there. There's a 24 car. Looks pretty bad. Brian Vickers limping around. Many contenders are heavily damaged. Five-time reigning champion Jimmy Johnson is involved. Jeff Gordon, Greg Biffle, Mark Martin, Michael Waltrip, and Matt Kenza. It all started when Michael Waltrip hooked his teammate, the franchise. The 24 car now sits in the garage, and his drafting partner sits on the track still, with no one to work with. The field pits and Jeff Gordon stands getting interviewed, disappointed that his chances are dashed. The field comes back to the front stretch and goes back green as the 37 of Robert Richardson drops back due to a speeding penalty. Up and forth as they run green is Stephen Wallace, who's running his first Daytona 500. Again, Paul Menard charges back to the lead with a push from Clint Boyer. Martin Truex and Dale Jr. work well together, moving up to the second tandem. Eventually, the Dever matcher Chevrolet shoves Brad Kozlowski to the lead. And on pit road during the last stop, it is reported that one of Kurt Busch's crew experienced a flash fire. In effect, flash banging him, but still managed to finish the pit stop. By lap 47, Dave Blaney has grabbed the lead, being shoved by Kurt Busch. But before the moment can be enjoyed, another backmarker wrecks were Robert Richardson. With the fifth caution out before lap 50, tow trucks recovered a 37 car from its lonely island. And Dave Blaney gets to lead another charge down the pit lane. Bain and Blaney lead the restart on lap 51, as the Labonte brothers put together an impressive run early. Kurt Busch and the rest of the field bails on Blaney, giving the lead to Paul Menard and Regan Smith once again. RCR appears to be strong, as the top four are all affiliated with them. Three of the in-house teams, and then the satellite team of Barney Visser Chevrolet. They go four wide down the backstretch, following Ryan Newman back. Kane and Dale Earnhardt Jr. have once again pushed toward the front, but the race is interrupted by yet another yellow flag, due to a stalled 83 Toyota. It's piloted by Brian Vickers, and the field wants more pits. Now the 88 car Dale Earnhardt Jr. leads off the pit lane and the green waves on lap 61. Kurt Busch goes humming by the Ganassi cars, and Tony Stewart lines up with his old car. Eventually, RCR reigns supreme once more, as Fox breaks out the Heat Seeker cam. By lap 70, Regan now leads the tandem between he and Kurt. Whilst Dale Jr. charges to the lead, the crowd shakes down the grandstands. In the back, Bain has found a new partner, the sixth car, David Reagan. Eventually, another caution comes out, and the field takes a varying number of tires, again with Jr. and Boyer leading. The caution is out due to Quapel losing a tire in turn two, and the 88 and 33 lead the field back down to green on lap 80. They're tandeming with Kane and Burton through the first corners, and Junior holds strong at the front facing a challenge from the Ganassi tandem running high. Eventually Newman and Logano come to the lead as Ganassi swaps and plummets. Newman leads for the first time on the day, pulling away by about six tenths. As the race approaches halfway, Logano is drastically outrunning his teammates as they're struggling outside the top 20. Many of the drivers who have been in the garage now have finally come back out to make some laps, trying to gain positions from the other cars. On lap 93, the second Childress car has an engine let go. Jeff Burton. At halfway, Robbie Gordon charges to the front, but that's short-lived as Truex and Carl Edwards get to the front as well. Ganassi leads again, showing strong by swapping and holding the lead. Eventually, a caution comes out from a spinning Montoya, and Robbie Gordon engineers a train of drivers down the pit lane. Robbie Gordon leads the two-wide field back to green, but Kurt Busch is the first in the turn one on the restart. The first car to challenge Bush and Smith after the green flag is the tandem of Martin Truex Jr. and Trevor Bain, running high and eventually getting to the lead. Boyer breaks them apart, though, and leads with 86 to go. After that, in the mid-pack, Tony Stewart and Dale Jr. get a kick out of almost eating concrete bump drafting. The 
The field now enters the final 200 miles. And at the front, Kyle Busch leads with teammate Joey Logano. But Travis Quapel has a problem, bringing out the ninth caution of the day. RCR Engines, meanwhile, has communicated to Regan Smith to not run part throttle due to previous issues on the 29 and 31. With Truex and Boyer heading the two lines, we have 72 laps to go in the Daytona 500. The top line prevails through the opening corners, and now the number of lead changes surpasses 50. We are closing in on the 1974 record, and Kurt Busch gets shoved under the yellow line, and the field gets even more racy. At the front, however, it's the same song, second verse. With 70 to go, Bobby Labonte and his 47 car have slowed and appear to be out of it now. The children's tandem soon get challenged by Stewart and Kyle Busch working together. However, Matt Kenseth greets the outside wall. Kenseth climbs out, and now the race is one caution away from tying the all-time caution record. The field comes down to pits again, setting up for one more stop from here on out. With 60 to go, we are green. The RCR cars immediately group up, but it's Truex and Bain who lead them the next time by. The following lap, however, Matt Kenseth, oh, trouble, great, trouble, on, trouble on the racetrack. And it is Montoya crashing along with Greg Biffle. And again, Montoya makes a great save to come down pit road as the caution flag flies for the 11th time today. That's the caution record now, as an orange cone gets sent into Embry-Riddle airspace. Cars come down with the intent to not take tires for the rest of the race. Truex and Bain lead with 54 to go on the restart and Dale Jr. charges through them both, grabbing the lead. Three wide as the urgency increases. Bush brothers get blitzed by the 88, and Jr. charges the field to the final 125 miles. Soon, Newman and Denny Hamlin come around the outside, and the Defy duo from the restart are back with Truex in fifth. Newman and Hamlin pull away as a 78 and 88 swap and begin another charge towards the leaders. With 43 to go, a record gets smashed. Travis Quapple has done it. His three accidents have helped tip the race over the record in terms of pace slowing incidents. Field comes in and stops are underway again. Few only for most, and Ryan Newman holds the top. With 37 laps left and Denny Hamlin accompanying him, they lead the field green. The top four break away as the rest of the field is on top of each other. Eventually, Robbie Gordon is a tad too yeah, aggressive. That's a pretty hard lick on that 22, Larry. Robbie gets a little contact. Oh, Tony, Tony, big miss Great right there. Job there. Look Montoya. at Montoya once again, just slips by. As the field doubles back up, Carl Edwards offers his services to Bain, which he denies because he believes it's better for him to push. With the same front row as before, the race restarts with 30 to go. And through turn one, Junior flies up through the field, and it is dicey right now. As Newman and Hamlin still hold their lead, Kyle Busch through one and two has a save for the ages and slots in front of Dave Blaney. At the front, Stewart shows Menard up behind the leaders. Kyle Busch in the pack has another moment with Jamie McMurray, and somehow they still don't crash. 25 to go now, and David Reagan has appeared. The underdog duo of Bain and Reagan charge to the lead, as both men hunt for career win number one. Kurt Busch, however, heads back to the point, before Rowdy Busch punches Boyer to the lead. Before Newman and Hamlin shoots the gap behind them, Martin Truex Jr. has a miracle moment and takes pit road sanctum. The pace gets slow once more, however, by Casey Kane, who has slapped the barrier. It sets up a 15-lap shootout. Green flag, and Newman takes them in the one. Stewart and Dale Jr. get together, and old friends get overrun by Regan Smith and Kurt Busch. But Kurt isn't the Busch that's going to make it to the front first on the restart. Kyle Busch pushing Clint Boyer goes ahead once more. And finally, the friend duo gets the rear of the leaders. But again, they can't get side by side. With 10 to go, Boyer and Busch push to the leaders. They lap past Jamie McMurray running on only seven cylinders. Now the underdogs have returned. High goes Boyer in the three, breaking up the lead tandem. Now the Boyer-Bush tandem heads the field. But here comes Regan Smith with Kurt Busch. Shuffling continues as Regan takes the lead off of turn four. And soon Tony flies to the outside and almost causes an incident, coming to six to go. Five to go now, and Newman has returned with Denny. The underdogs charge to the front as well, and David threads the needle. 10 miles to go now and David Reagan is making the moves of his career, leading the biggest race of his career. But then, another career moment ends. That's because Smith got a little bit of a gap between he and Bush, and Bush slammed into him. Multiple cars are out, and now the front row will be Trevor Bain and David Reagan. Junior under the caution has to pit for a rear tire going down, and it's going to be attempt number one at a green-white checkered finish. 
According to Kyle Busch, he predicted this moment. I told you all through speed weeks, I said it don't matter how long you can push because it's going to be a green white checker. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> He's not the first crazy. one. It's too late. Don't get crazy. Double file. Two laps. Green, white, checkered. Reagan gets down in front of Bain quick, and Stewart now gets fouled back. Robbie Gordon through one and two has an incredible save. And then the fans' worst nightmare. Gordon saves, saves it, but the, the six is being black flag, passing before the uh, start finish line. And now Newman again. Ryan Newman oh, no, hit the wall. Oh no, Junior! Truex and Junior. Oh no, Come and on. here's Truex. Caution is out. In the midst of all the drama, David Reagan has been black flagged. The quick move earlier has been determined as illegally changing lanes before a restart, and it requires him to do a pass-through penalty down the pit lane. That leaves Trevor Bain alone at the front, against Tony Stewart, Mark Martin, Bobby Labonte, and Kurt Busch. The 500, of course we know Trevor Bain, he could win his first 500 in his first 500 attempt. Stars up, ready. Tony Stewart's won the pole for the Indy 500. He's won the IRL championship, twice the Sprint Cup championship. He's won everything at Daytona. And coming through the middle, Kurt Busch. Now down to the inside. Bobby Labonte in that 47 gave Trevor Bain a heck of a push. Now all they can do is try to hug the bottom of the racetrack and protect. Bobby Labonte has shoved Bain to the lead, but he'll still have to face one last charge for many of the veterans of the sport. Looks like Tony and Mark might have a, I don't know if they got enough time to get back up there or not. I don't think they do. Dale Jr. checked and released at the infield care center. They'll face the white flag when they come around to decide the 53rd Daytona 500. Rookie Trevor Bain in his second Sprint Cup start will lead them to the white flag with Bobby Labonte. Here comes Kurt Busch and Juan Montoya. Carl Edwards in fifth. And we know Kurt Busch and Montoya is going to make a move. DW, when will they make it? I don't think they're going to make it till turn four. I mean, we keep hearing about I'm a setting duck when I'm leading this thing. So I guess that makes the 21 a setting duck right now. But We'll see here that 22 knows how to win from that position. That's where he won the butt shootout from. Edwards and Gilliland down to the inside. Try to where did that 34 come from? Try to Gilliland. spoil the party. Oh and my God! Spoiled the party for Kurt Busch and Montoya. And here they come through turn four. Gilliland, they... former pole sitter of the 500. Edwards has room underneath. Now he puts on Trevor Bain. It's over. Cinderella Bain is going to win the Daytona 500. Happy birthday, Trevor Bain, 20 years old. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? Trevor Bain has done the unthinkable. Trevor brings the Wood Brothers back to Victor Lane and becomes the youngest winner of the Daytona 500 ever. The 20-year-old burns it down on the front stretch and then can't find Victory Lane. What you are watching is perhaps one of the biggest upsets in NASCAR history. A moment that changed a man's life. The greatest moment of Trevor Bain's career. I keep thinking I'm dreaming. I really do. I mean, I, man, we, we said a prayer before, and, you know, we pray a lot, and we expect a lot of things, but uh, this just shows how powerful God is. And, man, I'm so thankful for the job that these guys did on this race car because it's unbelievable. I mean, this thing is our first 500. Are you kidding me? To win our first one, our second ever cup race. I mean, this is just incredible. I mean, I, I can't think the guys have worked with me all day enough. I mean, um, you know, there were 10, 15 different drivers that pushed us. Carl helped us there to get across the line. I don't know what happened with David there at that one point, but wow, this is unbelievable. I mean, these guys, Ford, Ford Motorcraft, uh, the Wood Brothers. How cool is it to see the Wood Brothers back there in victory lane? We got Leonard over here.